as you see some of his numbers before going down in a victory in Cleveland last Sunday. Meantime, the story for Denver, six key starters down today due to injury. Bailey, Dumerville, Moreno, and Brandon Loy, their stud wide receiver, a late scratch as word just came down moments ago. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew here from Sports Authority Field at Mile High on just a gorgeous day for football, Steve, in week number two. Cincinnati wins the toss. They will kick off here to start this football game. Matt Willis, the man back deep, stands in the back of the Denver end zone. The punt, or kick rather, goes through the back. And this is where Kyle Orton and this Denver offense will take over to start their afternoon. 281 yards on average last season among the best in the NFL. You see what he did Monday night, a short week for Denver. Good passing numbers, pretty good stats. But a three-point defeat here at the hands of the Oakland Raiders. Orton on first down goes play action, has time, throws near side, it's caught. That pass the 30-yard line to Eddie Royal. And will be asked to up his production today with some of the injuries that they're dealing with at the wide receiver position. Nate Clements makes the stop. Broncos up front, led by Ryan Blaney, the two-time All-Pro. Uh, started every game through his first three-plus seasons in the NFL. Meantime, the backs and receivers who touched down the injury to Brandon Lloyd. Eric Decker starts at his place, and Willis McGahee getting the start today in place of the injured Noshan Moreno. He has not necessarily been a workhorse over the past couple of seasons. Of course, his time with Baltimore. Here he is up the gut. Out past the 40. Nice yardage on first down. Let's take you through the defensive starters. Meantime, for Cincinnati, Jonathan Penene summoned to the front lines today, starting for the injured Robert Gathers, who is out with a shoulder injury. Linebacker group, meantime, headlined by Ray Maluka, who's moved from the outside to his natural spot inside this season. Also calling defensive signals for the first time in his career. Nate Clements among the new faces to that Cincinnati defense. Not much room to maneuver on second down, just past the line of scrimmage actually may have lost the yard as the clock continues to run here just under 14 minutes as we are just underway in Denver. You see Ray Maluga right there, Spiro. Get used to seeing number 58 flying around this football field. We talked with him last night. There's a quiet confidence about that guy, but he really feels strongly about how aggressive, how physical this defense is able to play and has been playing so far this year. Kyle Orton told us yesterday the importance of setting up some third shorts. This wasn't the case Monday night against Oakland. That catch will be enough for the first down. It's Royal again, his second reception on his first Denver drive of the day. I think we're going to see a lot of Eddie Royal out there today, Spiro. Good job of Kyle Orton standing in the pocket. You hit it right on the head, though. Kyle Orton told us important to make yards on first and second down to stay out of those third and long situations. Right there, third and four. You got the run pass option in that situation. All you do is move the chains with that short pass Eddie Royal over the middle. Good job by Kyle Orton going through his progression. Decker, the man in motion. Orton rolling out. Pass is caught by the rookie tight end. It's Julius Thomas. And he's hurt. Looks like. Oh, I thought he'd getting up limping a little bit. <laughs> The last thing the Broncos need is to lose another skill position player. You see good hard play action fake to the left side and right there just coming underneath Kyle Orton doing a good job getting the ball on the money quick and that was uh, Ray Maluga had a chance to make a play in the backfield just missed him. Get an update as quickly as we can on Thomas. Uh, his whistles Low that play dead. This one a false start penalty false against start Denver. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. It's second down. Now a touchdown where Denver is coming into today. A 23-20 defeat Monday night. The key additions we've already talked about Willis McGahee, Jabbar Gaffney, and Carell Buckhalter among the guys that are no longer here. Excited to see that guy right there, the rookie first round draft choice, Von Miller. Really got the Broncos coach John Fox, his whole organization, excited about his electricity. 
two of the top four picks in the NFL draft team today. A.J. Green, the fourth overall pick, a rookie wide receiver for Cincinnati. We'll see in a moment. And the aforementioned Von Miller. There's John Fox, first season here in Denver. Look at this, Spiro. I'm going I'm to go on a limb here. I, I really think Willis McGahee in this situation, he's got a great opportunity to make a statement today. I think he's a better fit for the style of running game that John Fox wants to implement here. He's a straight ahead, quick decision, hits that hole hard. No Sean Marino, not quite as quick in his decision making, hitting that hole. I think we can expect to see some good things out of Willis McGahee today. This is second and short inside Cincinnati territory. This is Lance Paul who goes from the third string to the second string today with the injury to Moreno as we go to New York and an update with James Brown. Buffalo trailing 35-31 in the closing seconds, Dan. And fourth and one, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Wide open, David Nelson in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. They're up 38-35 with six seconds left. Oakland has the ball. Five lead changes in that game. We'll keep you updated. Back to Spiro and Steve. JB, thanks. Wild finish in Buffalo, oh. two of the surprise teams very early in the season. Keep you updated on that score as this is a first and ten for Denver. Good first drive. This is once again Lance Ball. Nice little second effort bouncing off tacklers as he is close to the Bengals 40. I'd say John Foss got to be happy with that run right there by Lance Ball. You see what he's done in his career. Tenth season in the NFL. First here in, Car in uh, Denver, but you look at what he did in Carolina. And I'll tell you, one of the most amazing turnarounds of a program, I think, uh, that I've been associated with or seen, he took a 1-15 team, and then in his second year in the NFL, took them to the Super Bowl, lost in the Super Bowl to Atlanta that year, but what a great turnaround, what a great job he did. This is the game. he has some room to work. Up the middle, inside the 30, and another Broncos first down. This is what I'm talking about, Spiro, right here. Watch the decision Willis McGahee makes. That ball, he gets it, he says, you know what? I got some good push by my big boys up front. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to plant and I'm going to go. I think one of the things, and there's been some disappointment about no Sean Marino to this point in his career, he does not make the quick decision and hit that hole. He wants to try and bounce things outside. Again, I think that's why Willis McGahee's got a great opportunity today. Gardner's had good protection early. Zips one to the sideline. It's caught. Matt Willis with the reception of fourth year man out of UCLA and another Denver first down. You know, you look at the receivers on this Broncos team. Other than Eddie Royal, you got Matt Willis and Eric Decker. Between the two of them coming into this game, 12 career receptions right there, though. Matt Willis runs a nice route. Kyle Orton, great protection. That offensive line up front, no one's gotten near Orton yet in this drive makes it a lot easier to play the position when you've got no one in your vision. 15 yards on the hookup between Orton and Willis. And you saw the breakdown, six rushes, four pass plays on this opening drive for Denver. McGay, he's trying to cut back. Stopped at the line of scrimmage as the clock continues to run. Eight and change to play. <laughs> on this extended opening drive of the day for Denver, there's Marvin Lewis. Continuous finished to say the least to their campaign last year just four and twelve a lot of people felt like Lewis's time with Cincinnati was over but here he is again and an opportunity today Spiro to do something that they've never done before win their first two games of the season on the road starting off 2-0 on the road what a great start that would be for this Bengals team Come on. Play action. it's caught Ball inside the five, make it Spencer Larson close to the goal line. This is what Spencer Larson brings. He's a true fullback, but you see right there the bluff on the defensive end. Great job by Lance Ball getting the defensive end's hands down, but Spencer Larson out there in the flat, wide open. Kyle Orton puts the ball on him, and a good job by Spencer Larson lowering that left shoulder. All right, right. He's going to have a measurement, see if he picked up the first down. So Steve, they're down there starting running back. Brandon Lloyd, their best offensive player, is out. And so far, Kyle Orton and company looking awfully good. And look at that stat right there. One of the best, third best ratio of active quarterbacks in the NFL. 53 touchdowns, only three interceptions in the red zone. He makes good decisions as we see the Broncos picked up the first down right there. But Kyle Orton, one thing he does not do, you can, you can knock him and these people here in Denver have been rooting for that other guy in this team, that left-handed quarterback by the name of Tebow. Kyle Orton's had to weather the storm, but 
I'll tell you, he does a great job protecting the football. Well, we had a chance to visit as you see Tim Tebow on the sidelines with Kyle Orton yesterday. And he's got a very similar persona to another former Denver quarterback here, Jake Plummer. Guy who is so beloved inside the locker room, but not necessarily the case outside among fans and media here in Denver. Orton from the shotgun has got to put one on the tough. This will be his first incompletion of the day. Thomas Howard applying the pressure, the outside linebacker for Cincinnati. Sparodita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew, welcoming you to Denver on a brilliant Sunday afternoon. 71! 71! We welcome you from some of the other Week two action around the National Football League. A good opening drive for Denver. This is Willis McGinn trying to get into the end zone, fighting his way. But well, the Bengals' defensive front will hold its ground. Mr. Montepeco getting their first 60 year defensive tackle out of Michigan State. I want you to look at the desire, though, of Willis McGee right here. He hits that hole, lowers that shoulder hard. Look at him. He's got a little bit of help from his buddy Spencer Larson coming in there trying to peel the Montepeco off the pile there, but Good effort, good desire shown there by Willis McGahee to move that pile another yard. 71! That's exactly what John Fox wants to see. 15th play of the drive. This is third and goal. McGahee into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. Well, nothing fancy there, Spiro. We saw the balance that John Fox was talking to us about in our meeting with him yesterday. Again, this good hard drive, good push by the offensive line up front. It's tough to move people in a goal line situation, but a great job right there by that right side and McGahee sniffing into the end zone. There in Denver, Willis McGahee punching it in. And the Denver Broncos go 15 plays, 80 yards in eight and a half minutes to start this game as they jump out to a 7-0 lead on the Bengals. Stay with us. Uh, welcome back to Denver where the Broncos punctuated a great first drive with a good physical run by Willis McGahee. 37 yards on the opening drive by the Broncos, almost matching their total output for last week in the opening game where they had 38 total yards. John Fox wanted to make a statement this week. He wants a balanced football team. If anything, a little heavier on the run. He got on that drive. Nine rush, six pass. Great start for the Broncos. Well, just joined us, Denver, today. Minus some of their key starters on both sides, including their starting running back, no Sean Moreno. But so far, Willis McGahee has been up to the task in Denver. Seven and nothing Broncos, as we'll get a timeout. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And by Verizon 4G LTE. Built so you can rule the air. First possession of the day for Cincinnati after the Broncos go 15 plays, 80 yards in eight and a half minutes to take a 7-0 lead. This is Cedric Benson bouncing to the outside, picks up 5-plus. As we welcome you back to Denver, let's take a look at the starters. Andy Dalton, we told you, question mark this week with that right forearm wrist injury under center today. Or is Kenneth 15 in that 10-point win in Cleveland last weekend? You know, Spiro, this, this kid really impressed me last week, and we got a chance to talk with him yesterday. Even more impressed now, his poise, very, very mature for a guy with his youth. Very impressed how he played last week and how he handled himself yesterday. And you take into consideration the fact that he had to go through a lockout shortened off season into his rookie campaign. As a little trickery here on second down, the pitch play to Benson he was able to move the chains close to the Cincinnati 40. Let's get back to New York, a wild week two around the NFL. Trailing by three. Can Oakland win it with the Hail Mary? Jason Campbell, he scrambles around. You know he has arm strength to get it to the end zone. He throws it up in the air. Can it happen? Can it happen? 
Captain oh! Cersei comes up with the interception. Buffalo wins 38-35. Back to Spiro and Steve. JB, thanks for Ryan Fitzpatrick and company start the season 2-0 and all in the AFC Love East. Jordan simply makes the reception and good for five yards. Let's take a look at the starters for Andy Dalton's Cincinnati offense up front. They're led by one of the most underrated tackles in the NFL, Andrew Whitworth. He's signing a contract extension during the preseason. Meantime, the backs and receivers, A.J. Green, the fourth overall pick in April's draft. Just one catch in his debut last week, but it was a beauty. A 41-yard touchdown that gave the Bengals the go-ahead lead. This is second down. Five, they call it, from about the 45-yard line. The Cincinnati Steve tries to answer that monster opening drive by Denver. Meantime, the Denver defense up front. Jason Hunter starting today for the injured Elvis Dumerville, who sits with a shoulder injury. Linebackers also shorthanded. No DJ Williams. He's on the shelf. Wesley Woodyard starting in his place. And in the secondary, the future Hall of Famer Champ Bailey pulling a hamstring Monday night. He is out. Cassius Vaughn, who joined this team as an undrafted rookie a year ago, making his first NFL start. Third and short, Dalton giving to the workhorse. Banks and he's tripped up. It looks as though short of the first down marker, Broderick Bunkley and Joe Mays combining to make the tackle. You know, Spiro, that was, uh, I think if, if, if John Fox is doing his homework, and I we talked to Marvin Lewis about this yesterday, I kind of got the sense in watching their game last week, Cincinnati's game against Cleveland, they really favor that left side running behind Whitworth on that drive. Guess how many runs they had to the left side? Four out of four. They had four plays, all four runs to the left side. You got to show, you got to keep the defense honest. Kevin Huber on the punt. Eddie Royal making the fair catch out past the 10. At the Denver 14-yard line. Timeout here in the Mile High City where the Broncos have the early 7-0 lead. Here in Denver, the Broncos racked by injuries today. Six starters unavailable, but so far so good. As John Fox's Broncos have possession and a 7-0 lead. Spiro Vita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew here from Sports Authority Field at Mile High. Willis McGay. 40 yards, Steve, already for the day, eclipsing Denver's total team mark for Monday night. And you look how they did it in that first drive. Did it with both the run and the pass, but it's amazing. If you show you're committed to that run game, you commit to the physical style John Fox wants, they've got to come up inside with that safety. Cincinnati does on defense. That leaves you one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Makes it nice and easy for Kyle Orton to make those throws. Yeah, he picks up three on first down, sets up a second and seven. As we are now two and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Orton. Oh. Intended receiver on the play was Eric Decker at his back turn to him. Yeah, now that, that was a complete miscommunication. Kyle Orton throwing a pass. Eric Decker was sure it was a run. Ed Hockey Lee, Pass interference offense, number 87, was blocking downfield. 10-yard penalty. Repeat and second down. Eric Decker, the starter out there, because of Brandon Lloyd's game time decision, couldn't go with the strain growing. Eric Decker, very young, inexperienced. I don't know what he was thinking, but he was thinking it was a run. He was trying to block Nate Clements on the outside, and obviously with the ball coming in the air toward Clements, that would be considered pass interference. Look at John Fox in the sideline. <laughs> Penalty committed by Decker. You know, Spiro, only three wide receivers active for the Denver Broncos today. We actually saw a guy by the name of Tim Tebow running some wide receiver in the uh, pregame warm-ups. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it was going on in pregame warm-up a little bit. Broncos three for three on third downs. Orton's pass is deflected, nearly intercepted at the 20. It was Thomas Howard who got a hand on it. So Denver, after going 80 yards, 15 plays on their first drive, will be forced to punt. That's more like what Marvin Lewis wants to see there. His defense forcing the three and out. Brandon Tate, released by Bill Belichick and the Patriots earlier this month. Back team to return for Cincinnati. Britton Colquitt 
is the punter for Denver. This is Tate backpedaling from his own 28, and he is buried right after the catch. Quentin Carter, the first man there for Denver. Eddie Dalton company for their second possession when we come back 7-0 in Denver. Well, picturesque Sunday afternoon. Here in late September in Denver, Broncos 7, Cincinnati nothing. As Andy Dalton of the Bengals retake possession with just over two minutes to play in the first quarter. This is Bernard Scott playing behind Cedric Benson. Able to push toward the outside past the 35 and close to the Bengals' first down marker. Cincinnati 1-0 looking to make it back-to-back -back road wins. If they can pull this one out today, we talked about the addition of Nate Clements, Manny Lawson, Thomas Howard, the two key figures in that linebacking unit. But uh, still no sign of Carson Palmer. A lot of big names on that subtraction list. Ocho Cinco, T.O. Interesting to see how this young offense for the Bengals can handle this defense for the Denver Broncos. Very impressive job last week finishing out that ball game. 27-17 winners in Cleveland. Uh, second and one, they've got the first down and more out past the 40. As Dalton finds A.J. Green, the rookie, for the first time today. And here is Dalton, some of his handiwork, Steve, last week. You know what I liked about this guy last week? Look how cool he looks back there in the pocket. Watch his footwork right here on the touchdown pass of Jermaine Grisham. He goes through his progression, looks outside first, comes back and finds Grisham in the back of the end zone. I was really impressed with how under control he played and how accurate he was with that football last week in the first half. And Marvin Lewis told us he may not have the strongest arm in the NFL, but his ability to conceptualize the play, Steve, before it happens is unlike anything he's ever seen from a rookie quarterback, at least that he's coached. And you know what's more important, Spiro, than having a great arm? Because I can give you a lot of examples of quarterbacks that haven't had the best arm in the world, but the thing that is more important is knowing where you're supposed to go with that football and getting it out on time. Timing, accuracy, and decision-making, that's what comes into being a good quarterback at this level. And I think Andy Dalton has all the skills, at least he's shown all the skills at this point, to be a good quarterback in this league for a lot of years to come. And Dalton, a very impressive kid as he shrugged off all the Carson Palmer talk. Lockout short in off season. And he's taken it all in stride. He's performed very, very well so far. He makes another completion to A.J. Green out past the 50-yard line and inside Denver territory, close to the first down marker. End of one quarter here in Denver where the Broncos lead the Bengals 7 to nothing. Start of the second quarter here in Denver. The Broncos leading Cincinnati. 7-0, fifth play of the drive here for the Bengals. And after a slow start, Andy Dalton starting to hook up now with his rookie target, A.J. Green, who's made back-to-back -back receptions. Already exceeding his number from last week. As Cincinnati is forced to burn a timeout before the quarter even begins. There was a little confusion coming out of that last halftime. You see A.J. Green at the bottom of the screen. He had lined up on the wrong side of the field. That's what forced Cincinnati to take a timeout. This is third and one. Dalton play action trying to find a rookie clean. Overthrows him. And Cincinnati will punt. Well, I like the call on third and one. I like the aggressiveness out of Jay Gruden, the offensive coordinator, a little younger brother of John Gruden. But right there, you see Goodman not fooled a bit. Stayed in great position on A.J. Green. Andy Dalton with a good throw on the high on the outside gave A.J. Green to make a play. If he doesn't make the play, nobody does. So Huber on to punt. 57-yarder early. Eddie Royal signals for the fair catch. Bengals unable to down it. And Denver will retake possession from their own 20 when we come back. Jay Gruden still thinking about that last third and one play. Long incompletion as the Bengals took the shot. Dalton's pass to Green was incomplete. So now the Broncos retaking possession early second quarter. I know, Steve, you thought that they may take a shot on fourth down, but instead they elect to punt. 
Yeah, you're right. I, I really like the call going for it on third down. But let's talk John Fox right here, Denver Brown. He told us the areas of focus. Want to get the run game going, obviously. He feels like they need to improve play on the defensive line. And one of the areas going forward, they've got to solidify and eliminate any question about the quarterback. In this Second and eighth, the pass to Royal is broken up. Nate Clements got there a bit prematurely, and penalty markers fly. Yeah, that's one of those tough P.I. calls. The receiver coming in hard on the slant, the defensive back and press coverage. Pass interference, defense, number 22. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. There are not many better than Nate Clements in one-on-one -on -one bump coverage, but right there, a little too physical out of number 22. That's one of those calls. It's kind of 50-50. It's going to be called half the time, I'd say. Clements, the pro bowler back in 2004, drafted at Buffalo. So he wants to deal with San Francisco, now trying to resurrect his career with Cincinnati. Oh, first down, lofting towards the sideline. It falls incomplete. And Eddie Royals is hurt on the sideline. I told you that Denver is down to just three active and healthy wide receivers today. Their emergency receiver is Tim Tebow. Anytime you see something like this, Looks like he's grabbing that groin. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Gillette Fusion Pro Glide and the Irritation Defense Line. Help defend your skin. Pizza Hut. Your favorite plays deserve your favorite pizza. Your favorites, your Pizza Hut. And by membership rewards from American Express, the social currency. Well, the Denver Broncos already down six starters. Their best remaining wide receiver is that man, Eddie Royal. As he has to be helped off the field. And I'll tell you what. Today, the starters, Brandon Lloyd, Steve, excuse me, the late scratch to their list of walking wounded before the game. Yeah, and, and you see Brandon Lloyd with the strain growing. You can't speculate on an injury, but that's what it looked like to me. Orton on second and ten. Denver keeps it on the ground. As they continue to go to their workhorse, Willis McGahee, who is starting today for the injured no Sean Moreno. And look who's getting ready to come in on the sideline, number 15, Tim Tebow, going in now. The Broncos, as we said, only had three active receivers on the roster today with Brandon Lloyd eliminating himself before the game. Fans don't know it right now, but Tim Tebow's going in at wide receiver. They just figured it out. You can see the reception and hear it in the background. So Tebow will line up in the slot towards the top of your screen. I love it. I absolutely love it. That just shows the desire in this young man, too, and his versatility. Orton on 37. They go draw play. And Lance Ball is wrapped up. Stop for a loss. And the Broncos will punt. <laughs> you know, the guy's a unique talent in so many respects. Uh, but he's also a guy that'll do anything for the team. And they're well established what a great guy Tim Tebow is, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see him make a play or two out there today. Tebow did not see the field Monday night in that three-point loss to the Raiders. I have to figure he will see the field as this game goes on due to the injuries that the Broncos are dealing with. Here's Brandon Tate baiting the first tackler out past the 25 as Marcus fly behind him. Tate, the late addition to this team just a few weeks back. Ed Hockley is our referee here in Denver. During the return, illegal block in the back by the receiving team number 27. A 10 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Cincinnati keeps the ball, first down. Well, Tim Tebow, the story that just won't go away here in Denver. In fact, it continues to pick up steam. Started the final three games for the Broncos last season. And you look at what he did in those games. They only won one of them, but I was impressed. I had a chance to cover the last two games, and I, I saw some really good things that made me believe that there might be, there just might be a chance there's got to be a player in this league at the quarterback position. Well, if he can't get in as a quarterback, 
for Denver. Maybe as a wide receiver today, the emergency wideout with the injury to Brandon Lloyd. Jerome Simpson, the intended target for Cincinnati, as the Bengals will have it on second and ten. One last interesting point on that Tebow thing for now, Spiro. Prior to this new CBA, he would have been listed as the third quarterback inactive with the new CBA. They're not counting that third quarterback against the active roster, so he can come into the ball game in a different position and, and not hurt the team. And previously, if he came in as a third inactive quarterback, he would have had to stay in the game as quarterback. Dalton goes play action, throwing new side. It's complete. A pass to 20. A.J. Green with his third reception. So after a quiet start, Green just one reception last week. The big 41-yard touchdown. They start to target him in his offense. Andy Dalton looking to make it a second successive road win to start the season and Steve that is some pretty good company for the young man <laughs> that is some good company right there there's not a not a slouch in that group uh, except maybe that second guy Dan Marino our little our friend back in New York uh, Dan just kidding I like the way Andy Dalton and Jay Green are trying to get AJ Green involved in this game early as well this is first and 10 from 21 Benson is mauled right at the 20 by Joe Mays, the linebacker. Well, we talked about it a little bit earlier. The first drive, there were four runs to the left side. There's a reason. Andrew Whitworth, the big left tackle, is the best, most experienced lineman on this team. Cedric Benson pounding it up in there, especially late in that ball game when they had to had to grind it out and take control of that football game. I think this is a football team that likes to run it to the left side. Problem is, I think John Fox might be looking for that today. Dalton on second down, high throw to the sideline. It's caught by Simpson, the fourth year man out of Coastal Carolina. So Cincinnati trying to inch closer to that first down mark. A nice grab by Jerome Simpson right here. Good coverage on the outside by Goodman, but Simpson using those long, ar long arms to pull it in. Marvin Lewis told us yesterday, before last year when Jerome Simpson really got to play, he never dropped the ball. As a scout team player, one of the things he's been concerned about is he hasn't been as consistent catching the football. Nice grab right there. This is third and one for the Bengals. Benson. Didn't get it. I don't think he did. Yeah, I think you're right, Spiro. Woodyard and Brian Dawkins teamed on the tackle, and Cincinnati will punt. Great job being stout by that Denver front seven. And you said right there, number 20, Brian Dawkins sticking his nose in, you, in there, the 16-year, eight-time Pro Bowl safety. Just keeps on ticking. Keep around the punt. Already 57-yarder today. Eric Decker, the 90-yard punt return last Monday against the Raiders. Watches that punt sail out of bounds. Timeout in Denver with the Broncos in front, seven to nothing. Here in Denver, the iconic John Elway, the team's new executive vice president of football operations, getting his hands dirty as he watches this game from the Broncos' coach's box. Decker on the reception, fumbles the football close to the 50, and Cincinnati recovers. Leon Hall, the quarterback, has it. Trying to find some open real estate, cutting to the sideline. He's in Denver territory, and that is where Andy Dalton and company will retake possession, down 7-0. Well, I'll tell you, it was a great call coming out of the break. First down, nice hard play action. Open up the middle of the field. And Decker, wide open, makes the catch. But what do you know, a hat on the football, the ball comes out. Cincinnati recovers. That was Reggie Nelson, the strong safety that popped that ball out of there. You see, no one feels worse on the field than Eric Decker does. I'll tell you, one of the things, though, that's a trademark of the Marvin Lewis football team is turnovers. They're always a very aggressive, ball-stripping, ball-hawking football team right there, a good example. Decker forced to start today for the injured Brandon Lloyd has had a rough first half, a penalty, and now a fumble. As Benson bounces to the sideline, he's got the first down as he's brought down at the Denver 30-yard line by Wesley Woodyard. What a nice run by Cedric Benson. To me, he just looks 
rejuvenated this year. He is he is trying to make a statement, I think, this year. He signed on to remain in Cincinnati this year. Uh, there was some speculation whether he would come back, but Marvin Lewis wanted him back for sure. And he's running like a guy that wants to play a lot longer, wants that football all the time. Lord, that shoulder looked good on that last run. So the Benson stepped out short of the marker, so it's second and short. Less than a yard, Dalton out of the pocket, throws across his body, and finds his man, Andre Caldwell, for the first time today. Cincinnati able to move the chains there. It's first and ten. That's another thing Andy Dalton brings to this football team, the dimension of a, a ability to extend plays. He didn't see what he wanted. There was good coverage out of the Broncos initially, but he's got the mobility, the awareness, and the confidence to move the pocket a little bit by some time, and that allowed Caldwell to get some separation. Nice conversion there by Andy Dalton and Caldwell. Steve Dalton just doesn't look like a rookie, does he? He really doesn't. I mean, there's nothing about him if you didn't know he was a rookie that says rookie. Dalton, 6 of 8, 46 yards so far. That went through the hands of the receiver, Colin Koshard. Nearly intercepted by the linebacker, Von Miller. As Jay Gruden, the first-year offensive coordinator, younger brother of John, of course. Those two teaming up in Tampa Bay, winning a Super Bowl with the Bucks. So far, he's had a very good rapport with Marvin Lewis in this Cincinnati offense. Very creative mind running his West Coast offense. Guy likes to mix in the run a little bit more than most coordinators are on the West Coast. Here's Benson inside the 20. Late marker is thrown into the backfield. As we come up on eight minutes to play here in the first half with Offense Denver in front. 65, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Uh, that's the rookie fourth round draft choice, Clint Bowling right there. Playing on a very young offensive line, the senior member left tackle Andrew Whitworth, six years in the league. Clint Bowling right there, bad time for a, a holding penalty. Nullified a pretty darn good play, although you could probably argue that that holding penalty is probably would allowed that to be a nice, nice pickup by Cedric Benson. Bowling in a starting spot, taking the vacated position of Bobby Williams, who's serving a four-game suspension after violating the league's policy on performance-enhancing drugs. This is second and 20. Dalton from the shotgun finds Benson over the middle, and Benson takes a hard hit. At the 25-yard line, Joe Mays after a 10-yard pass play. That was a pop by Joe Mays, but let's see. You notice when Cedric Benson turns the corner, he keeps those shoulder pads down low, and he's delivering the blow. You seldom see him get knocked back. He's anticipating the contact, lowering that shoulder, and falling forward every time. Those are good qualities to have in your workhorse running back. Benson, 121 yards last week. So far today, seven rushes for 33 yards. All of them off that left side you saw in that graphic there. Bengals on third down today, 0 for 3. This is third and long. Dalton flushed from the pocket. Grass is caught, but well short of the first down marker. Ryan Leonard makes the catch. Uh, there was some good pressure coming from the Broncos right there. Derek Harvey. Von Miller applying the pressure. Andy Dalton doing a good job just getting that ball out of there, not taking the big loss. Giving his kicker, Mike Nugent, a chance to knock one through the uprights. Mike Nugent on for the first time today. We'll try one here. As they're spotted just outside the 35-yard line. 45-yard attempt for the seventh-year man, Nugent. Plenty of distance. And it is good. So Cincinnati on the board for the first time at the 6.33 mark in the second. Down four here in Denver. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chrysler. Imported from Detroit. And by the new 70-inch class LCD TV from Sharp. Well, keep up with the NFL when you're on the go. The NFL's mobile apps are all new for the 2011 season. Just visit NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Here in Denver, Spiro Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew. Mike Nugent, 
45-yard field goal to give Cincinnati its first points. They're now down 7-3 as Nugent boots the kick through the end zone. Denver will take over from their own 20. The 2011 season bringing with it some alterations to the rules. The kickoffs, of course, garnering the major headlines, Steve, as they move them up to the 35-yard line. Uh, kicking off here in Denver is never usually much of an issue, but you're going to see a lot of touchbacks here. And then you see the different rules. All the players must line up within five yards of the kicking spot. The purpose of those rules the run, hard run off the right side of that Denver Broncos offensive line. The purpose of those kickoff rules is to try and address the injuries. For injury issues, you know, there's been a lot of awareness raised about the, the head injuries result of the violent collisions in the NFL. And the kickoff, one of the most exciting plays in football, but also one of the most dangerous. And I think one of the issues was to try and find a way to eliminate the number of injuries on kickoff returns. Well, the concern among NFL fans, Steve, at least with the change to the kickoff rule, was that some of the excitement would be taken away, but that has not been the case so far. For the first week plus of this NFL season, nice cutback maneuver by McGahee. Out past the 25 and close to the Denver first down. Let's get an update with James Brown in New York. Scoreboard is right, believe it or not, in San Francisco, Spiro. And Alex Smith drops back, blitzes on. Kyle Williams comes up with a 12-yard touchdown. 14-0, 49ers over Dallas. First career touchdown reception for Kyle Williams. Back to Spiro and Steve. So the Romo led Cowboys in danger of dropping to 0-2. Wow. As they are down by two touchdowns up in the Bay Area. He's okay. The play action, his man is upended. Spencer Larson, the Broncos starter with the fullback position. On first down, out past the 45, brought down at the 47. What can you say about Jim Harbaugh out there? San Francisco, you talk about the Cowboys maybe starting off 0-2. The Niners, more surprisingly, maybe being 2-0 if they can find a way to beat the Cowboys. He's just taken his success show on the road from Stanford right across, right across the way to San Francisco. Pretty impressive job. Good time here in Denver, the Broncos Trying to get to 500 after a disappointing performance here Monday night. They keep it up the gut on second down. Larson has two receptions today for 17 yards. They're able to move the chains for Denver. Coming up to sprint halftime, report JB, Dan Boomer, Coach Cower, and Chris Jenkins in the studio. They'll have all the latest scores and highlights. It's all coming up on the sprint halftime report. Just a brilliant Sunday afternoon here in Denver. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline. Our entire CBS crew, Cincinnati in Denver, trying to win here for the first time since 1975. Right now down 7-3. Orton on first down, keeps it on the ground again. And Steve, we've been seeing some vicious hits today as McKay, he's slow to get to his feet. This is, this is not from Cincinnati. The big hit we're going to hear just to say, let's listen to it. Willis McGahee running into his own man, Matt Willis, He's down on the field still. Well, John Fox breathing a sigh of relief on that Denver sideline. Looks as though Willis McGahee is okay. Although he'll take a play or two off here, running into his own teammate, Steve Matt Willis. Had to be helped off the field. And I'll tell you what, if Matt Willis was not there, Spiro, I think McGahee had a chance to break off a big one. There was no, there was a nice scene. Willis McGahee hit it hard. I think he was completely caught off guard because all he saw in front of him was green grass. Clock starts to run, 328 left in the first half. 7-3 Denver as they work here on set. He made quick throw, it's caught by Decker. Has the first down inside Cincinnati territory down to the 43-yard line. Nice job by Kyle Orton and Eric Decker being on the same page. You see Cincinnati coming with the blitz up the middle. Kyle Orton does a good job of throwing off that back foot. That's a, something that a, a quarterback has to be able to do at this level. You've got to be able to elevate off of one foot moving backwards and put the ball with some velocity on the money to a receiver breaking in. Good conversion right there by Denver. So 14 yards, Orton to Decker. Orton now 8 for 12 for 88 yards in the day. Has it here, first and 10. 
And Horton will be forced to burn a timeout. Timeout Denver. That's their first. It's a 30 second timeout. Well, tomorrow on CBS, get ready for the next wave. Terry O'Quinn from Lost comes to Hawaii 5-0. It's the season premiere you won't want to miss. Tomorrow only on CBS. Well, I think if John Fox has his way here for the rest of this game, he'd prefer to stay with the personnel he's got on the field. Regular personnel, two wide receivers, tight end, two running backs. He might see some more two tight end sets. I don't think he wants to rely on going to that third wide receiver if it's going to be number 15, Tim Tebow. Tebow, the emergency wide receiver today with Brandon Lloyd injured. The day he stopped short, getting up about a yard. There's Tebow on the sideline. Did not see the field last week. But uh, we've seen him today for one snap. Steve, if he can't get on the field as a quarterback, he'll try his hand at receiver. I, I guarantee you that's his mentality. He is that kind of guy. Broncos going to let this run down to the two-minute mark. Well, Denver started this game with a 15-yard, a 15-play, 80-yard drive, rather. Took a 7 to nothing lead, but Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati on a 45-yard Mike Nugent field goal has cut the deficit to four points. Two-minute warning here in Denver. Coming up in a moment, we'll send you to New York for the Sprint Halftime Report. JB and the crew all standing by with the latest scores and highlights. Joined in studio today by Chris Jenkins. It's all coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Gordon's pass near side for Decker. He's broken up by the linebacker, Manny Lawson. I think two of the, two of the best additions, excuse me, Spiro, for this Cincinnati team were the outside linebackers. Right there you see Manny Larson. Great break on the football. The six-year vet out of... North Carolina State coming over from San Francisco. And on the other side, Thomas Howard coming over from the Oakland Raiders. That has allowed our boy Ray Maluga to move back to his natural inside linebacker position. And there's Tim Tebow on the outside right down here, wide receiver. Tebow again, the emergency wide receiver today with the injury to Brandon Moy. Broncos began the day with just three healthy wide That's outs. Second. 30 second timeout. All kinds of confusion on that Denver sideline as Marvin Lewis looks on. I'll remind you, Thursday on CBS, CY TV guy calls person of interest a must-see mystery. Emmy Award winner Michael Emerson and Jim Cazavell star in the person of interest, premiering Thursday only on CBS. Well, John Fox in so many ways, the antithesis of the man he's replaced here in Denver, Josh McDaniels. Disciplinary and defensive-minded guy. Now hoping that Tebow can give his offense some juice here on third down and eight. Harden from the shotgun throws. It's caught inside the 35 right at the marker. That's the tight end, Daniel Fells. Need to get to about the 33. They do, and it's a first down for Denver. Nice tough conversion here for the Denver Broncos. Good coverage on the play. That was Ray Maluga making break on the football. Actually, excuse me, that was Thomas Howard making the break on Daniel Fells. Good throw and catch. Yard sets up the first and ten. Nice cut back move inside the 25-yard line. And Denver close to another first down as Willis McGahee turns his legs for nine yards. Second and short that time, he's chopped down in the backfield. Michael Johnson, the defensive end, got there first. Well, we're inside a minute left in the half. I think Denver has one timeout left. They're already in field goal range for Matt Prater. Tim Tebow will stay in the game. He'll line up split wide to the right at the top of your picture. Third and three. Cut back here is ball inside the 15 to the 10. So Denver with the first down. Clock stopped at 33 seconds. I really like that call by Mike McCoy, the offensive coordinator for Denver. 
Little inside handoff. Ryan Clay, do you see big number 78 just caving down that left side? The third year player, first round draft choice back in 08. Just caving in that whole left side or right defensive side of the Cincinnati Bengals. Made an easy running lane for Lance Ball. 14th play of the drive for Denver. They started the day with a 15 play drive. With a long touchdown. Up 7 3. Orton, first and goal, locks it in zone. It's incomplete. Trying to find Decker. Coverage by Leon Hall. This is the area on the football field, Spiro, where you really need to have precision and timing and reps together. And that's that's a big disadvantage for this Denver Broncos offense right now. You don't have your regular starting receivers out there. Hard to get that confidence for Kyle Orton right. to know where to go with that football on time. Broncos have one timeout left. This is second and goal from the eight. Orton, end zone. It's caught incomplete. Matt Willis trying to find some open real estate. It'll be third and goal for Denver. Uh, great coverage by Leon Hall, the great cornerback for Cincinnati. I don't think Matt Willis would have come down inbounds anyway. Good effort to try and bring that football in, but they were trying to run a sluggo, a slant and go on the outside. Leon Hall did not bite on it. Great defensive play. Hall the star of the Cincinnati secondary with the departure of Jonathan Joseph to Houston. And defending on third and goal, Orton feels the pocket collapse and he's sacked back at the 17-yard line. Geno Atkins, the man who wrapped him up. Cincinnati will burn a timeout here, 10 seconds. Timeout Cincinnati, it's a 30 second timeout. Please reset the clock to 16 seconds. There were 16 seconds on the clock when the timeout was called. Well, you're gonna see good pressure. Kyle Orton had nowhere to go on this ball, on this play. You can see he's gonna drop back and you're gonna be good pressure. The Montepeco dropping back, only a three man rush, should not be able to get pressure on Kyle Orton. But you can see just a, just a mix-up, a little bit of confusion on the offensive line by the Denver Broncos, and that let Thomas scoot in there. You should never see pressure on a quarterback with only a three-man rush. I think it caught Kyle Orton by surprise. You don't want to take a sack in that situation. So Matt Prater, who's got as much range as any kicker in the NFL, on to attempt just a 34-yarder here. With 16 seconds left in the half. Prater is good. And Panthers lead back to seven with 12 seconds remaining. Andy Dalton grabbing the helmet. As we are just seconds away before halftime. Well, let's look into Steve's crystal ball. And we'll start in the AFC. You've had some uh, intriguing picks, Steve, well, early in the season. This makes it easy. I think the only surprise is right here. For this year although you wouldn't be surprised if you know what happened last week and, and, and what's been going on with the indianapolis colts i think houston's got to be the front runner in that afc south but you got baltimore i think in the north new england in the east san diego in the west and then your wild cards i think are going to be the jets and the pittsburgh steelers well this is where you were bold this is where the surprise comes. that's right yes yeah, so we go with the eagles in the east and green bay new orleans i'm picking st louis to win that west division even though they had a bad week last week well, look at my wild card. Now, folks, we promise he did submit these picks before the Detroit victory today as the Lions go to 2-0 as put, they just hammered Kansas City. We put that on the board last night. I think uh, Detroit and Atlanta, and I'll tell you, a lot of people were questioning me last night about the Cowboys. Well, 49ers may be getting it to them today. They might start off 0-2. I think my pick's looking even better now at this point. You turned some heads at our production meeting with yeah. that pick. But what a two-week start. Matthew Stafford in the Detroit Lions now 2-0. As they just put it to Kansas City today. Brandon Tate watches the kick sail through the end zone. And Andy Dalton and company onto the field one final time here in his first half. Well, Cincinnati's first eight games of the season. We should point out last year, Steve, they had the most difficult schedule in the NFL. But uh, this year, the luxury of opening with four teams that had losing records from a year ago, although the Niners and Buffalo look pretty good. They, they really do. Buffalo came back and, and took that game at home. 
Oakland Raiders got to a good start, to, jumped up on him, but Ryan Fitzpatrick brought him back. But yeah, Cincinnati, the table is set. We're going to see Andy Dalton take a knee here. You know Marvin Lewis would love to sneak out good of Denver job, guys. with good a job. So Denver jumped out to a 7-0 lead. The Bengals cut it to four. Now a seven-point lead after the Matt Prater field goal late in this first half. So the end of the first half in Denver with the score, Denver 10 and the Bengals 3. We'll be back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. Back with you from Denver for the start of the second quarter. The Broncos a seven-point lead over the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Nice to have you with us. Week two in the NFL, Spiro Didis and Steve Berline. Uh, we talked about Denver's injuries. They look good, a long extended drive to start. But uh, Cincinnati hanging around down seven. Yeah, you know, the way this game started, Spiro, you'd think that the Broncos were going to be world beaters. They came out, had a great 15-play, eight-and-a-half-minute drive, punctuated by a touchdown by Willis McGahee. But Cincinnati's hung around. Denver has not been able to apply the knockout punch, so we've got a ball game. All right, let's take a look at the NFL Mobile Recap presented by Verizon. And Steve mentioned Willis McGahee. What a start for this guy as he uh, today starts for the injured Noshan Moreno, punching it in from a yard out, has had a lot of help it, from it was, the quarterback, Kyle Orton. It was a great punctuation mark to a drive. Kyle Orton throwing the football well. Willis McGahee running the ball aggressively behind a, a very disciplined aggressive offensive line you can see the stats right there the rush yards heavily in favor of the Denver Broncos they're kind of leading in every in fact they are leading in every single pertinent statistic right there but only up by seven points on the scoreboard so Marvin Lewis has got to feel pretty good about his team's chances in the second half Matt Prater on to boot it away for Denver as we are ready to go here in the second half from downtown Denver Raiders kick about 15 yards behind the end zone. Cincinnati will take over. And there is our very own Shannon Sharp, the newly minted Hall of Famer. Now, ladies and presented with his standing inside the Broncos ring of honor here in Denver. His old teammate, John Elway, the new vice president of operations for the Broncos. And uh, Steve, you look at that resume, nothing really more needs to be said as a Shannon continues to pile up the accolades. Yeah, you know what? I had a chance to play with Shannon. Cedric Benson to start the third quarter takes a wallop. It was Joe Mays who got there first. And let's listen to this pop from Mr. Mays coming in. Good first play for the Denver defense, but I was about to say, Shannon Sharp, I had a chance to play with him for a year here in Denver, and uh, the respect that his teammates had for him because he earned that respect on the football field. He's getting everything. He's earned everything he's gotten at this point. We're very happy for him. Andy Dalton, 8 of 11 in the first half, 52 yards through the air. Benson makes the catch, but he is wrapped up right after he did so. And again, it's Joe Mays who has been in his shadows all day long. Well, that's a great play by Joe Mays, sniffing out that screen. Andy Dalton did a good job setting in the pocket, looking down the field, but Joe Mays was able to key the offensive lineman, saw they were trying to set up the screen to Benson out to the right side, and boy, he'd make a good break on that football. Well, Mays, one of the few personnel moves that actually paid off from the Josh McDaniels era. And he ramped up his offseason workouts, earning himself a starting job at that middle linebacking position for Denver. This is third and 15, Dalton from the shotgun. Pump fakes, throws, it's caught. It's Jordan Shipley well short of the marker. Needed to get to the 30. As they pick up just five yards, Jonathan Wilhite, the former Patriot, on the stop. I, I think that was a great job by Andy Dalton. You know, one of the things you worry about with a young quarterback in that situation, third and 15, backed up in your own end zone. Is he going to try and force a play in there? He didn't do it. He took what he could get, completed, pick up five yards, and it's over. Cincinnati had to come from behind and win in Cleveland last week. I'll have to do the same here in Denver. Down seven early second half as Denver takes over when we come back. Early second half here in Denver with the Broncos taking possession as they lead Cincinnati 10-3. Spiro Dias and Steve Berline. And look who's hanging out with us here in the booth. Fern Lundquist, our very own living legend, joining us here as the play resumes. 
with about 13 minutes to play. Vern, you live here in the Colorado area, era, era I should say. Uh, you do the Broncos preseason games. You know this team better than anyone else. What about the direction now for a franchise that had been run so well for so long that's, that's been on hard times? Well, they have been on hard times, Spiro, and I think that uh, uh, I think I'll know timing and answer that for this play. <laughs> this is a second and six as Horton goes play action. Goes near side, that's Willis McGahee out past the 45, gets to midfield at the 50. And so Marker is throwing it. High Personal foul, roughing the pass or defense. Number 68, back to the quarterback at the knees. 15 yard penalty, at the end of the run, first down. Uh, Jonathan Fanene com committing the no no <laughs> on Kyle Orton with the late hit right there. Went down to the legs, you know, he was, if he were blocked and went down low, that would never have been called. But he had, he was un, unimpeded to the quarterback. He bought the quarterback's legs, they're going to call it. Fourth Cincinnati penalty, totaling 39 yards today. There's another defense trying to hold steady. Down seven. There's Lance Ball, the backup running back with the injury to Noshan Moreno. Why don't you go ahead and finish your thought? Uh, I just, I, I think this, Spiro and Steve, that uh, the last uh, few years of the Shanahan era, and obviously Josh McDaniels, that uh, with disastrous results. And John Fox has brought an attitude in here that I think is terrific. And uh, he's accessible. Uh, he interacts with the community and the team. And, and uh, the, I think bringing John Elway in was very significant for this uh, franchise. It's a Broncos team that has not seen the postseason since 2005. Not had a winning campaign here since 06. Ball stays on the field inside the 30, inside the 25. Brought down at the 24-yard line. He's right at that first down marker, and they will move the chance. It's the second time Denver has run right into that teeth of that blitz that Cincinnati's throwing up there, and they've had success both times. Vern, one thing I want to get into you maybe after this next play is We've seen a little bit of everything out of Tim Tebow over the last several years. No one knows him better than you. He's played wide receiver today. How about that? Uh, he's All the attention he's gotten here in Denver, the fans love him. Let's talk about your thoughts on the Tim Tebow situation here. First and 10, Orton goes play action. It's caught by Decker inside the five. Touchdown. There is a penalty marker in the end zone. But Decker, the young man who's had a rough afternoon, early penalty, fumbled in the first half. Trying to atone for some of those miscues. That's the kind of play right there, Spiro, that makes you forget about all those bad things. That's a big play at a big time for Eric Decker. Nice throw right on the, right on the money from Kyle Orton. Good time for a big touchdown. You know, Eric Decker has been a very pleasant addition to this team, too. Uh, honored Eddie McCaffrey and asked for his number. And Ed McCaffrey, here's After how After the touchdown, there was a personal foul. Horse collar, defense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The touchdown counts. And anyway, Eddie McCaffrey sent him a signed jersey. A kind of nice acknowledgement of the respect that Eric Decker was paying to McCaffrey. Not surprising at all from my good buddy Ed McCaffrey. And right there you saw the horse ball at the end of the play, but that's very, very respectful from Eric Decker too. I'm, I'm impressed by that. So played around for the point after it's good. And Denver has opened up a 17-3 lead. Vern Lundquist will hang out with us here on the broadcast booth in Denver with the Broncos have built a comfortable lead. Stay with us. Sparrow Dita, Steve Berline, joined by Vern Lundquist in our broadcast booth in Denver. The Broncos go five plays, 59 yards. Eric Decker with a 25-yard touchdown reception as the Broncos have opened up a 17-3 lead early in this third quarter. Matt Prater around a kick as Denver has now scored 10 unanswered points to open up this 14-point cushion. Raiders kick booming through the end zone as the Cincinnati offense will try to chip into the deficit when we come back. Time out. 
of a young Cincinnati Bengals trying to make it a second consecutive road win to open the season. They're down 14 points a year. As Dalton airs it out on first down, it's caught by the sliding rookie A.J. Green for the Cincinnati first down. Nice, nice poise by Andy Dalton. You're looking to make the hard play action fake to the left side. Sets up strong in the pocket. He checks out his left side, doesn't like it, comes back, knows exactly where A.J. Green is supposed to be and puts that ball on the money. Sparrow Dita, Steve Berline joined by Vern Lundquist here in the booth. As you see A.J. Green there on the Bengals sideline. Has come on after a quiet start. 26-yard hookup there. He's got 49 yards receiving on the afternoon. I'll sneak in, Spiro, and our SEC plug on CBS. Sure. A.J. Green, of course, one of the... Offside defense, number seven. No. I'm sorry. False start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. That away, Ed. <laughs> catch, it, catch it before it's walked off. Uh... Spiro and Steve, A.J. Green, just one of a, a, a handful, more than a handful, of great players that came out of the SEC and made such an impact in the first week of the NFL last week. Uh, this kid can really, really play. Marvin Lewis just gushes when you ask him about him, about his, not only the physical, the obvious, he's so big, he's so long, he's fast, he can adjust the football, but he says the way he carries the himself. Came into the neutral zone first, causing a false start. Therefore, the foul is if the offside by the defense. It's five yards. It's first down. A little confusion out of Ed Hockley there. Well, it brings back a memory of a call that he made here about three years ago <laughs> yeah. that he certainly hasn't forgotten. Uh, you had to go there, right? I yeah. know. I, I, I'm it's sure a, he appreciates He's that. an old friend, <laughs> and he's much more muscular than I am, so I'll apologize later. And it's still pumping those weights. Yes, he is. As Cincinnati moves inside Denver territory to the 49-yard line. He's Dalton on first down. His pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. As Vern just referenced it, here we go. We take you back week two. 2008, Denver on the San Diego one-yard line. Down seven with a minute and change left to play. And uh, this was one that uh, Ed would have liked to have had back. Uh, was this one of those plays that just the wrong thing happened at the wrong time from his perspective and a very, very significant play in that ball game allowed uh, Denver to go on and win the game. He really handled the aftermath of that well, though, I thought. You know, fessed up to the mistake. Here's Dalton. Second and five. It's caught by the rookie Green inside the 30. And there are some of the talents that Vern and Steve were just talking about. Green now with his fifth reception. He's over 50 yards. Oh, what a great grab right there. Throw and catch. You see A.J. Green, though. How good was he at Georgia? Well, I'll tell you what. There's not one person that's quite... Look at that grab right there. One of the greatest catches I think any of us have ever seen. Were you at that game, Vern? Not that one. Not that one? Not that one. You saw him make quite a few great catches. I remember years, him so. getting flagged for an excessive celebration penalty though once that uh, oh my gosh it was such a bad call and when you're that good you're going to tend to celebrate yeah that's true green's 25 yard reception gives cincinnati a first and 10 they walked it end zone it's through the hands of the intended receiver jerome simpson on the play as the former undrafted rookie cassius vaughn apply the coverage you know what i like spiro about what's going on here right now they're putting a little bit of this game now out of necessity on Andy Dalton's shoulders, and he's responding. He's showing once again this game is not too big for him. He's making good throws. He has not thrown one questionable ball today, in my opinion. All pass plays so far for Cincinnati on this drive. This is second and 10 from just inside the 25. Dalton, it's caught at the 20. It's Jordan Shipley. Vaughn makes the tackle. Shipley now is down. Shipley, the second-year man out of Texas. Led all AFC rookies in receiving yards last year at 600. So they continue to work on Shipley here. We'll get a timeout in Denver. Back with you here in Denver, Jordan Shipley, the Bengals wide receiver, has to be helped off the field. Try to get an update on his status as quickly as we can. Meantime, a third and five for the Bengals. A critical play of the game as Cincinnati 
desperately tries to claw back from 14 points down. Bengals 0 for 5 on third downs today. Dalton from the shotgun. It's caught. And now the officials say incomplete. And we're going to see a field goal attempt here. But Vern, before we let you go, we referenced, we referenced uh, Tim Tebow. We'll look at the replay. Close to a catch here, but the right call. Talk to us, though. You remain in contact with Tim Tebow. How is he doing right now? Share some thoughts. Well, I think he's frustrated and disappointed. Uh, uh, Tim, uh, I think I mentioned to you, Steve, that uh, Gary Danielson and I did 23 of his games in Florida, so we got to know him really well. Uh, there was a point in July when it looked like Wharton was going to be traded that he thought he might be the starter. But he's, you know, you know him. He's a, he's a team first guy. Here's the field goal. I never thought I'd be calling a Bronco game, Spiro. I didn't mean to step in on you. 37-yard <laughs> kick by Mike Nugent. Vern, pleasure. Thank you for stopping by. Vern Lundquist, the great broadcast. They're giving us a couple of minutes. 17-6 in Denver. Well, the Cincinnati Bengals trying to hang around here in Denver. Mike Nugent booting a 37-yard kick and cuts the Denver lead to 11. Uh, you, you would have loved if you're Andy Dalton to finish off that drive with a touchdown. Nice drive down the field. Have to settle for the field goal, but something to build on. Mike Nugent on to kick. Cassius Vaughn back deep in his own end zone. Will field from his own at eight. Eight yards deep, that is. Out past the 10. And brought down at the 15-yard line. It's for a very tough decision, Steve, with the new kickoff rule. These guys fielding from seven and eight yards deep, whether or not to should take a chance. You know, there was some, so a lot of conversation, and, and part of the intent of the rule was to take the, the, the kickoff return out of the game to an extent. You know, one of the most exciting, violent plays in football. But as you saw right there, a lot of these returners now are going to be more willing to take a returnable ball out, deep out of the end zone. It was actually the first kickoff return in this game. As Orton takes over from their own 15-yard line. This is Willis McGahee. Making the start today for the injured no Sean Moreno. We'll take a look at some of the you know, players traded away during the Josh McDaniels era. They still haven't forgiven McDaniels here in Denver for the man at the top of that list, Peyton Hillis, who has now become a star with Cleveland. Yeah, and the bottom two guys obviously were draft choices, but yeah, Peyton Hillis making the, the decision by... Josh McDaniel making him pay the price for putting him away like that, taking advantage of his opportunity in Cleveland. Here's Orton on second down. It's caught. Now it's Matt Willis out past the 20. And brought down to the 22. Denver needs to get to about the 25-yard line for the first down. Nate Clements on the tackle. Well, this is a situation where now if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you really have to step up as a defense. Ray Maluga and company, they've got to step up and make a stop here. Marvin Lewis, I'm sure, conveyed that message to him. This is a big third down opportunity for Denver, but Cincinnati has to step up. The day he lowers his shoulder, didn't get there. Thomas Howard, the outside linebacker on the tackle. And Denver will be forced to punt. And they did step up. Should get the ball back now on this drive in, in pretty decent field position as well to start the next drive. This is Britton Colquitt on to punt for the Broncos, standing at his own 10. He's had a good day so far, averaging better than 57 yards per punt. Brandon Tate signals for the fair catch. And Cincinnati and company will take over from their own 28. So when it comes to solving mysteries, she can do anything but forget. Poppy Montgomery and Dylan Wall star in Unforgettable. It premieres Tuesday only on CBS. Marvin Lewis looking on from the Cincinnati sideline. Bengals just trying to hang out, give themselves a chance as they look for their first win in Denver since 1975. Bengals a 10-point win in Cleveland last Sunday. Broncos, of course, a home loss here Monday night against Oakland. 
Andy Dalton, Steve, another steady, impressive performance. 13 of 19 today for 110 yards. They've tried to do it against this very stout Denver run defense. you got to give a lot of credit to this Denver defense for sure. Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator, got to be happy prior to that play right there. Boy, big hit by Joe Mays. But prior to that play right there, only 41 total yards rushing for the Cincinnati Bengals team. Great effort by the Broncos on deep. Denver has been stout today with their run defense, but it's been a struggle overall. As Dalton's pass for Jermaine Gresham batted in. Marker is thrown. Andre Goodman on the coverage. A little bit of contact right there. Goodman, yep, yeah, hanging, hanging on him pretty good. One of the things I'm kind of surprised about, Pass though. interference, defense, number 21. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Cassius Vaughn making his first NFL start at corner. The undrafted free agent out of Mississippi. Definite contact. He was hanging on the jersey. In college, you can get away with that kind of stuff a little bit more. They call a little bit more tightly in the NFL. They don't want those receivers getting hung up on the line that much. <laughs> Steve Jermaine Gresham had six catches for the Bengals last week, 58 yards in the touchdown. Today has been held in check by that Denver secondary. This is first and then Dalton goes play action, faking the Benson. Eluding a tackler, this will be a holding penalty against the Bengals. As Dalton's pass is caught by Chris Presley on the sideline. Yeah, they're going to call Colin Koshart on the hold here. Deep in the back. Holding field. offense, number 81. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. You're 100% right, though, Spiro, with the game that Jermaine Gresham had last week. Touchdown pass, six receptions. I really expected him to be a big factor in this ball game. I don't know if it's so much what Denver is doing defensively to take him out of the game, or whether they just don't have a lot of plays dialed in for him this week in their game plan. There hasn't been one ball thrown his way yet today. This is Cincinnati offense trying to replace some very big pieces. Of course, Carson Palmer. Ocho Cinco moving on. Of course, T.O. no longer with the Bengals. So far today, just 153 yards of total offense. This is A.J. Green, who's been their star through the air, working the sideline against Cassius Vaughn as he picks up eight. Now he's been the most significant contributor today, A.J. Green has. I'm surprised that we haven't seen more of an effort to try and single out Cassius Vaughn and see what he can do outside. He, this is his first start. Most of the time in the NFL, those guys are targeted. A big old bullseye on those first-time starters out there. Dalton from the shotgun on second and 12. It's caught inside Denver territory. Simpson still going nearly to the 30-yard line. Cash is going in Raheem Moore. Able to finally drag him down, but not before Cincinnati picks up some huge yardage. Look, look at Andy Dalton right there. Do you see how he used his eyes, looked to the left? He knew immediately where he was going with that football. He didn't put it on time, on the money. And Jerome Simpson, another big receiver opposite A.J. Green. you got to wrap him up, take him to the ground. Simpson hooks up with Dalton for 31 yards. And Cincinnati has it from the Denver 32. Dalton. Cincinnati offense really starting to gain some momentum. Simpson again for 12 yards and another first down. Cincinnati's trying to change the tempo here, going with the no huddle offense, letting Andy Dalton kind of control the pace here. He's responding very well. Dalton finds Benson. Benson inside the 15, close to the 10. Right at the first down marker, Moore and Woodyard on the stop. I, am, I cannot tell you how impressed I am by this kid. He, he, he seems to be so in control. That was his fourth receiver on that route, the check down route. But he knew by the coverage right away nothing up the field was going to be there. Made a nice check down throw. Dalton on first and goal, it's throws, end zone, touchdown! And Cincinnati is right back into the game. Andre Caldwell with the catch. 
And Marvin Lewis says, let's go for two. You know, you got to credit Marvin Lewis and Jay Gruden on this drive. Changing the pace, the tempo with the no huddle. Trusting Andy Dalton to make the good decisions. He comes through for him. But I think Dennis Allen, John Fox, this Denver Broncos defense was caught off guard there. I am very surprised that we did not see some pressure at some point on that drive. You let Andy Dalton stand back there. He's shown he can, he can come through and make the plays. Try and rattle the, 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 the rookie with some pressure. Well, if they can convert here, it is a field goal game with 3.36 left in the quarter. Bengals two for four on two point tries last season. Dalton throws, it's incomplete, trying to find it. Simpson there. Tight coverage by Goodman. And I'll tell you what, Spiro, I think that my, Marvin Lewis might have jumped the gun there a little bit going for two points. You still got three minutes left in the third quarter here. I understand the mentality you want to try and get it on that three point number, but there's a lot of football left. You've got well over a quarter left. And I, I would question at this point in the ball game. I know Marvin Lewis, you could probably make a pretty strong case for doing it. In my opinion, I think you take the point. You're going to get the ball back several more times with a chance to, to go ahead and make it a closer ball game. Well, Lewis talked about the presence of his rookie quarterback, Andy Dalton. And whatever he doesn't have with arm strength, he makes up in that department. A young man who is so confident despite the lockout shortened off season and all of that. Very impressive Bengals drive to get them right back into the game now, down five. And I would venture to say that when that defense for the Denver Broncos huddles up over there on the sideline, you see I like the leadership being shown by Andy Dalton right there going around trying to keep guys pumped. But the Denver Broncos, I'm sure, are going to be expecting that up-tempo defense this next drive as well because it did work so well for them. Either way, I would say Andy Dalton's going to see some pressure on the next drive. Dalton, a perfect 5-for-5 five five on that drive, 73 yards through the air. That's Mike Nugent on for the kick. Crashes Vaughn, watches it sail through the end zone and out of bounds. Yeah. Oh, Friday on CBS, the hit drama Blue Bloods returns for a new season with a special performance by Tony Bennett and Carrie Underwood. Tom Selleck stars premiering Friday only on CBS. Here in Denver, Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew with you. Denver Broncos at one point scored 10 unanswered. Built a 17-3 lead, but the Bengals have clawed back. Now down five. Gordon play action fake to McGay. He slings it near side. It's caught. That's Matt Willis at the 27-yard line. 10-yard hookup. Holding offense for 78. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Big Ryan Clady called for the holding penalty right there. You don't hear that too often. You said it before, Spiro, the two time all pro left tackle. First round draft choice back in 2008. One of only 22 offensive linemen to play three consecutive years in the league from the rookie year on and, and not miss a game. He started all, all 16 games each season for this Denver Broncos organization. Orton, quick throw from the shotgun. He finds Decker. Just past the line of scrimmage. And brought down to the Broncos 13. Now we touched on some of the key players lost today, but at least early on, Steve, their offense looked very good. Yeah, you saw Eddie Royal in that first catch. If they needed any more pain, losing him early in the game to a strain growing. Right there you saw Eric Decker, though. He's come up. Both good and bad for the Broncos today. He had the, the costly turnover early in the game, but made up for it with a big touchdown catch later in the later in the game. Broncos started the day with just three active wide receivers before losing Royal. Orton has it stripped. It's loose on the field at the 14-yard line. Cincinnati says they have it and they have recovered. And that was Michael Johnson coming around the end. Kyle Orton scooting up in the pocket, got a little lazy with the football. Didn't think anybody was coming up behind him. You're going to see Michael Johnson coming off the edge of number 93. Beats Ryan Clady, which again doesn't happen too often. Actually, he did not beat him so much as, as Kyle Lorton holding that football a little bit too long. I think Ryan Clady felt he had run Michael Johnson by Kyle Lorton, but not to be. That ball is knocked out. Big turnover. Great opportunity here for Cincinnati to take control of this football game. The Matapeco with the recovery. 
So Orton, who threw a pick and lost the fumble last Monday night to the Raiders, with a costly turnover here, giving it to Dalton and company. Watch this right here, AJ, right here. Uh, AJ Green, Spiro. I'd, I'd like to give him a shot right here on the play call. Instead, they keep it on the ground with Benson. Inside the 15, back to the original line of scrimmage, may have got a half yard as Jason Hunter makes the tackle. This is an opportunity here where Marvin Lewis knows you get the big turnover deep in your opponent's territory inside the 20-yard line. Anything less than a touchdown is a complete disappointment here. Big, big challenge for the Denver Broncos defense to see the last drive. Five of five for Andy Dalton. Dalton approaching 200 yards passing today. Has it here on second and 10. It's caught Gresham. Loses the football and the referees say incomplete. Cassius Vaughn on the initial hit. As Gresham continues to be very quiet in this game. Really good coverage on the play by Denver. See Cassius Vaughn right there. Ba almost baiting Andy Dalton into making that throw. Andy Dalton, I think, thought he had an opportunity to make a play on the outside, but Cassius Vaughn breaking on the ball makes a good play. We've got a player down on the field for Denver. It's their rookie stud linebacker, Von Miller. Broncos already playing without three of their defensive starters, Dumerville, Champ Bailey, and DJ Williams. <laughs> you know, I heard some talk. Good to see Von Miller up, for sure. I heard some talk before the game. Former teammate of mine, Brian Greasy, who also played quarterback here in Denver, he do, does local radio here, made a point that with the five players on the Broncos, you know, Doomerville, Lloyd, Champ Bailey, the list that we showed earlier, that represents over 50% of the payroll for the Denver Broncos. Can you believe that? Some high-priced talent on the Denver sideline, but right now Denver leading by five. As we get to a critical third and ten, Cincinnati today on third downs, 0 for 6. Dalton. Little delayed screen pass to Bryant oh, Leonard close. inside the five. It's close. Well, he is right at the marker. We'll see where the referee spotted. Tackle made by Raheem Moore. And it looks as though the Bengals are short. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this may not look like much. But watch the touch throw by Eddie Dalton over, over the top of the line. That is a hard pass to complete. I'm telling you, Spiro, I've been in that position. you got to go up and over. Very dangerous because you got linebackers breaking up on that football. But what a great throw by Eddie Dalton. Gave him a chance to get the, the first down at least. And disappointment for Marvin Lewis will have him settle for a field goal attempt. Mike Nugent on from 23 yards out. And it's through the uprights and Cincinnati Cuts the deficit to two. So 65 seconds left in the third in a two-point game. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS runs out regional games, including Matt Schaub and the Texans battling Drew Brees and the Saints. Meantime, Mark Sanchez and the Jets will battle Darren McFadden and the Oakland Raiders. Check your local listings beginning with the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines. You know, one of the games that on earlier on CBS you saw was the Kansas City-Detroit game, a pounding by Detroit on Kansas City, but to make things worse for Todd Haley and the Kansas City Chiefs, the injury to Jamal Charles. Uh, no definitive word yet on that, how significant that injury is, but uh, they've been through some serious, serious injuries, and they've got to face now San Diego next week. They lost the great safety, Eric Berry, last week. Uh, if they're going to be playing without Jamal Charles, they're going to be really at a big-time disadvantage. Well, Todd Haley had that disappointing finish in the postseason a year ago at Kansas City, but really starting to build something there. Uh, boy, what a terrible start wow. for the Kansas City Chiefs, 0-2. And, and even more concerns now on uh, the injury front. In the meantime, in Denver, Broncos 17, Bengals 15. With 65 seconds left to be played in quarter number three. Those whispers about Kyle Orton they start to resurface after that last turnover. He has a look at their comparison, Steve, in terms of what they've done as starting quarterbacks here with the Broncos. Well, it's a it's a very hot topic, hot button here in Denver. 
no doubt in the locker room who the number one quarterback is, but the public sentiment is for Tim Tebow. But Kyle Orton has the confidence in his coaching staff and this team. Orton with the handoff to McGahee. Up to the 24, 25 yard line. Tackle made by Manny Lawson. Let's go to JB in New York for an update. All right, Tony Romo for Dallas had gone out with a rib injury. John Kitna came in and. And off of John Kitna interception, Alex Smith, a wide open Delaney Walker down the sideline. 29 yard touchdown. 49ers up 21 14. All right, Romo back in though for Dallas now. Back to Spiro and Steve. JB Benz, Cowboys were down 14 0 at one point in that game, now down 7. As the action resumes here in Denver, Willis McGahee picks up 7 and a Denver first down. Well, this is an important drive now for Good Denver to make a statement as we come to the end of the third quarter. Cincinnati's got the momentum going right now. Great job by the defense for Denver holding to a field goal last drive, but their offense has got to keep that defense on the, on the sideline for a little while. John Fox in Denver trying to break into the win column after that disappointing loss here Monday night against the Oakland Raiders. So the end of the third quarter with your score, Denver 17 and the Bengals 15. We'll return to Denver after this message and a word from your local station. Here in Denver, an AFC battle between the Broncos and Bengals. And as we welcome you back, Sports Authority Field and Kyle Highsborough, Adidas, Steve Berlin, our entire CBS crew. Kyle Orton in Denver. Trying to gain some more cushion on the scoreboard. Spencer Larson with the catch. And picks up five yards. I'll tell you what, Thomas Howard showed his athletic ability on that play right there. I thought when that ball came out of Kyle Orton's hand, it was going to be a nice pickup for the Denver Broncos. But Thomas Howard jumped on Spencer Larson's back immediately, held him to a, a six-yard game, what I thought was going to be about a 15-yard game. Orton on second and five. Here's McKay sneaking up the middle. And his second burst gets him out past the 45, close to midfield, as he's stopped there by Ray Maluga. Now, this is what John Fox said he likes about Willis McGay. He said he reminds him a lot of a former running back he had in Carolina, Stephen Davis. Look at the footwork, the little sidestepping and shuffling and spinning and the vision. He knew that Chris Crocker was coming from that left side. He felt him coming. That's what Willis McGahee brings, a great sense of vision and footwork and feel. McGahee today, 22 rushes for 84 yards and a touchdown. 10-yard run there gives the Broncos a first and 10. Or in play action. Goes sideline, it's caught by Decker and he's gone! <laughs> 52 yards and Denver builds on its lead. I'll tell you what, this was a great throw by Kyle Orton. You might say why it was behind him, but you know, Kyle Orton did this on purpose. He knew, he knew that Nate Clements' back was to Eric Decker and to the football, that he couldn't see it. He threw it on a line to Eric Decker on the outside where he knew only Decker could make that catch. And then you had two defensive backs run into each other. It's an easy touchdown for Denver. Well, Decker's day started with some miscues, but boy, has he come on. Broncos go 80 yards in just five plays in two minutes and 35 seconds. Decker now with 113 yards receiving on five catches. As Prater is perfect on the point after. And Denver's lead now at nine points. Here in Denver, the Broncos with a long touchdown strike between Kyle Lawton and Eric Decker to give themselves some breathing room now with a nine-point lead. Well, there's a couple things I want you to look at here, Spiro. Here's the matchup right there. That's Eric Decker on Nate Clements. He's going to go out and up. But watch right here. Chris Crocker, the safety, he's going to come back to the middle. He's got the angle on the pass that Kyle Lawton throws, but he takes a bad angle. Watch how right at the top of the route, 
Parker is in position to make a hit, but runs right past him. And that takes Nate Clements out of the play and lets Eric Jacob take it into the touchdown. Yeah, take it in for the touchdown. So the 52-yard hookup makes it 24-15 Denver in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Now the rookie Andy Dalton just under 200 yards passing. Feels the pressure and he's set. Von Miller, the stud linebacker in his first NFL season, got there for Denver. Now this is a great job by Von Miller doing what he does best. Coming off the, coming off the edge, right off the middle there, boom, bent inside. Beat Orlando Franklin, the rookie second round draft choice off the right side. Andy Dalton, I think that was the first time today. I think he was a little bit confused by that blitz. He had A.J. Green sitting wide open on the sideline, but didn't know where to go with the football. Bengals losing 13 yards, have to get to the 30 to move the chains. Dalton from his own end zone, finds Simpson, he's got the first down inside Broncos territory, and he's still going. Simpson finally tracked down inside the Denver 10. As what a play by Cincinnati to give the Bengals life. Well, I'll tell you what. You get Andy Dalton backed up, second long in his own end zone. Denver had brought pressure on the previous play. You're going to see Simpson go right down the middle of the field. He, he's going to come right through here, right down the middle of the field. And look at the timing on that throw, up and over between the safeties. Second and 20, Spiro, to stand back in your own end zone and throw a ball like that. Unbelievable. 84 yards, Dalton to the fourth year man, Simpson. And Cincinnati has it first and goal. Dalton finds Gresham. Brought down at about the six yard line as the Bengals pick up five. You gotta Cincinnati get... just will not go away. I'm sorry about that, Spiro. You got to give Marvin Lewis and Jay Gruden a lot of credit, though, for showing the, the confidence and Andy Dalton back there in second long in your own end zone to throw a ball over the middle of the field. What a great play. The rookie Dalton now 21 of 28 for 280 yards. The work from the shotgun on second and goal from the six. Dalton end zone. It's caught by Green. Was he in? The same Touchdown. Yes. I don't know about that. I've got to see the replay. I'm not sure about those feet on A.J. Green, but what a great throw and catch. Any, any way you look at it, let's watch his feet. It's an automatic booth review on all scoring plays this season in the NFL. I think mm. that left foot comes down on the line. I think they're going to overturn this. The right foot, I think, is in. No doubt, but look at that left foot. There's got to be an angle that shows it, though, Spear. Remember, it's got to be conclusive evidence. There's got to be no doubt about it. Let's watch that left foot. Ah, man, I don't know if it's going to show it clear enough. The call on the field was touchdown, and it will stand as Mike Nugent will come on for the point after to try to cut the deficit to two points. Nugent is good, and Cincinnati once again has fought their way back into the game. Wow. I, uh, what a ball game we got here in Denver. Now the Cincinnati Bengals cover 80 yards in just four plays in two minutes, 13 seconds. A.J. Green, the five-yard touchdown reception that looked awfully close on the sidelines in the end zone. And suddenly, Denver's lead is cut to two points. Another look at the play. A.J. Green barely dragging in that left foot. And it's a two-point game. Back with you from Denver. The Broncos take over up two. 11-17 to play in this fourth quarter. And what has become a wild game here in the Mile High City. Cincinnati down nine points early in the fourth. They march better than 80 yards in just four plays. And A.J. Green, the man at the left of your screen there, 
Five-yard touchdown, barely Steve dragging that left foot inbounds yeah, I, to make it a two-point game. I'm baffled, Spiro. I tell you, great drive by Cincinnati first off. Way to answer. But I'm baffled because in my mind it wasn't clear that that was a touchdown. That unbelievable play. I just wasn't convinced that those feet were in. Horton gives to McGahee on second down. McGahee picks up minimal yardage. Well, every scoring play in the NFL yeah, under automatic yeah. booth review, and apparently from what they saw from the first two or three looks, there wasn't enough to delay the game, Steve, further and look at the replay even yeah. more. Yeah, I guess they're looking for a conclusive replay that shows it was not a touchdown. You can't tell with the shadows and everything else. I talked to Carl Johnson, the head of officials for the NFL during the break, and he said we can't get an answer as to why the re replay officials made that decision until after the game. So. We're going to continue to scratch our heads about it. The referee made the call, was right there, had a great look at it. His orange pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. And there's Frosty Rucker. Got his big mitts up on it to deflect it to the turf. And look what we have here. Cincinnati getting the ball back in good field position, but let's look at it one more time. You have to give A.J. Green unbelievable credit, though, for the athletic ability. We talked about it. Marvin Lewis has spoken about it. You know, you just cannot see on that line whether those feet are in, but a spectacular catch nonetheless. So in that context, the referees made the right call. You need enough conclusive evidence to overturn it. And the call in the field was touchdown. Quentin Paul put on to punt. Brandon Tate fields from his own 16. And he takes a hard smack at the 25-yard line. So by the same token, we'll look at Andy, Andy Dalton here, look at what he's done today. Very impressive again as a, as a rookie quarterback to step in and play at the level, make the throws that he's making. Again, only one time today have I seen him make a throw that I didn't think was a very good decision, but I think by the same token on that touchdown, if it were ruled to be no touchdown, it would have been the same situation. They could not have overturned it either way. So here is now Cincinnati, just 4-12 a year ago, looking for a second straight road win to begin their season. <laughs> Bengals have been down by as many as nine points. Actually trailed by 14 earlier. Five yards on first down as Marvin Lewis looks on, double-digit losses. Two of the last three years. Kiro, this is one of the most, traditionally one of the most difficult places to play for a road team. I would expect this crowd to make things a little bit more difficult for Andy Dalton and the Bengals right now. I'm surprised. I think that last touchdown kind of took some wind out of them. It was a screen play, draw play rather, as Cedric Benson gets up to the 40-yard line. Picks up 10 yards and a Cincinnati first down. Well, we just got confirmation from the replay booth that, in their opinion, it was a touchdown. A touchdown pass to A.J. Green. So I will continue to, to wonder, but in their opinion, it was very clear. Cincinnati and company now trying to build on their momentum first down. Benson on the take, Brian Dawkins on the tackle. Cedric Benson, who spent five days in an Austin jail earlier this month, stemming from a couple of misdemeanor assault charges, said that the experience changed him forever. Slept on a floor for five nights. But, uh, I'd say that's an experience that would change anyone. Marvin Lewis said he came back with the same razor-sharp focus that he came into camp with back in early August. Dalton, pump fakes, can't find Green on the sideline, and a late marker comes in. Definitely P.I. Cassius Vaughn on the outside there, never made an attempt to find the football. And as we all know, in the NFL, you've got to... Pass interference defense. Number 41, not playing the ball. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Thank you, Ed Hockey League. you got to make a play on the football. You'll see Cassius Vaughn in great position, but never turns his head back for the football. 
There was also contact up the field, but it was the fact that he did not turn back and look for that football. Well, on the second year man making his first NFL start in place of the injured champ Bailey. This is first and 10 from the Denver 42. Benson taking on tacklers down to the 38 Mays on the tackle. But uh, that rookie combination, as you see another injured Denver defender, it's Robert Ayers. And look at tandem, Steve, of Dalton and Green now wreaking havoc against this Denver defense. And I, I would expect, I, I don't know why Jay Gruden hasn't tried to test Cassius Vaughn, who was just called for that pass interference. Put A.J. Green out there on him and throw some of those routes to see if he can make a big play. Second and eight for Cincinnati. Dalton pump fakes again. It's caught, and now they say incomplete. But the acrobatics on display today from AJ Green. This could not quite make the reception. Very, very close. I, we're seeing the unique ability that AJ Green has to judge the ball, the high ball, to go up and get it at the high point. He is six foot four. Very, very long. Quarterback has great confidence to put the ball up there where he knows only A.J. has a chance to make the play. Marvin Lewis called Queen the Here comes best pressure. first round talent pressure off ever of coached. This is third and eight for the Bengals. Dalton in and out of the hands of Simpson who had the first down and more. And Cincinnati will punt. I'm sorry, I got excited there, Spiro. <laughs> There, there was some pressure coming. That's what I wanted to see from Denver to put a little pressure on Andy Dalton. They got up in his face, and what happens? He throws an inaccurate throw. He went to the right spot, had a man open, but the pressure in his face is what made that throw a little bit off. Good, strong play by Denver on defense. Simpson had an 84-yard reception earlier in the fourth to set up Cincinnati's last touchdown. A costly drop there. Will give Denver the football. Eric Decker with the fair catch. And Denver will be pinned deep inside their own territory when we come back. They're in Denver, 70,000 plus, trying to witness the Broncos' first win of the young season. But now taking possession back, clinging to the two point lead. Well, this McGahee minimal yardage on first down as we welcome you back to Denver. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew. Andy Dalton, the first-year quarterback. Just under 300 yards passing and has his Bengals right where they want to be with six and change left. Yeah, and, and to back Denver up to start this drive, if Cincinnati can somehow come out of this with a three and out, we are going to get good field position. Here's Orton on second and nine. Barely releases before the pressure came. It's incomplete intended for the tight end, Daniel Phelps. Orton today, 15 of 24 for a buck 95. I think that was Manny Lawson coming off the edge, applying the pressure to Kyle Orton. Steve, biggest play of the day, and Tim Tebow will come in. Tebow today, the emergency wide receiver. No Brandon Lloyd, Eddie Royal hurting himself earlier, has not returned. Tebow lines up at the bottom of your picture, split wide to the right. Yeah. Orton from the shotgun on third and nine. He throws, it's incomplete, intended for Willis, and Denver will punt. I'll tell you what, Leon Hall, and Matt Willis were, were there was no, no, no shyness about contact on that play. I think the referees determined it was insignificant. But right there at the top of that route, there's some, there's some hand grabbing going on. And finished it up with a little pop from Leon Hall. All signing that big contract extension in early September. That move. So vital for the Cincinnati, Cincinnati defense first. after the departure of Jonathan Joseph to Houston. 
And now Cincinnati will burn a timeout. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS runs out its share of regional games, including Matt Schaub and the Texans taking on Drew Brees and the Saints. Elsewhere, Mark Sanchez and the Jets will battle Darren McFadden and the Raiders. Check your local listings beginning with the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Spiro, that was a good timeout by Marvin Lewis. I think a little bit of confusion on this punt return before the snap, and Marvin Lewis realizes how important it is to try and take advantage of this field position. He wants to get the right return set up for this situation. Colquitt punting from a couple of yards into his own end zone. What a punt. Boomer. Tate watches it take a Denver bounce inside the 15-yard line and out of bounds, but a marker is thrown. What a punt. Ed Hockley, our referee today. Clock stopped at 5.44, Denver up 24-22. That's a 77-yard punt. I think if my math is right now, I'm not professing to be a scholar, but if that line of scrimmage was a 12, been told that it was 81 yards so I guess I'm <laughs> at Notre Dame education yeah you know what paying off again for me either way pretty darn good we got, uh, I think there was a little something going on out of bounds on this sideline this is the Denver Broncos sideline a member of the kicking team number 25 went out of bounds was pushed out of bounds but stayed and continued out of bounds that's unsportsmanlike conduct that's a 15-yard penalty that's enforced from the previous spot. Wow. First down. It's the Broncos, Chris Harris. That is huge. Chris Harris, that's something that he's got to learn. When you're, you're a rookie, undrafted rookie, you don't understand all the rules maybe. You've got to make the effort to get back on the playing field. If you're just running down the sideline, not Correction. trying. It's half the distance to the goal. Refer to be beat for this is, fourth down. this is hidden yardage right here. I mean, that was a 781-yard punt. I don't know what to, you do the math on this one, but Chris Harris, just because he didn't try to get back on the field, unbelievable. Well, the Broncos lose this game. Remember that penalty right there. That was one of the turning points. So Colquitt forced to repunt after one of the greatest kicks of his three-year NFL career. But by the same token, Spiro, you, the defender cannot make contact with the with the punt cover player on the outside if he's out of bounds. But that punt cover player has got to make the effort to get back on the field. Ball put from the back of his end zone. Tate waiting from his own 40. Here comes the former Patriot dancing inside Broncos territory to the 45-yard line. But what a difference after the penalty. Well, for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS. Here in Denver, Cincinnati and the Broncos. Spiro Thetis alongside Steve Berline with the score. Denver 24, Cincinnati 22. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following the game, except on the West Coast. Spiro, I know my math is right on this one. That was a 44-yard penalty on the Denver Broncos. From the 11-yard line down to the back now to their own 45-yard line. That's a huge play. And now the rookie, Andy Dalton, with a chance to bring his team back down two with 5.30 remaining. Week two around the NFL. Let's check back in with JB in New York. San Diego fans would love to hear Rivers of Jackson all season long. Steve Berline's going to love this catch. Vincent Jackson from Phillip Rivers, 26 yards, one hand catch, gets in the end zone. His second touchdown of the day. New England up 28 21. 10 catches, 172 yards, and two touches. I know you like it too, Steve. You know I love it, JB. That Vincent Jackson, boy. I wish he would have been available in my fantasy draft. He's a heck of a player. Phillip Rivers happy to have him back. So the Patriots up seven at home here. Second and six for Cincinnati. Benson dragged down from behind. What a defensive play by the rookie Von Miller. You know, 
Talking about Von Miller, this is a guy that his pass rushing ability, not a question. His speed and his ability coming off the edge, unbelievable. I mean, it's as, as rare as, as special as Coach Fox has seen that he can remember. But playing in space when he's off the ball, that's where he's got a lot of progress to make. Cincinnati 0 for 8 on third downs today. It's third and six. Dalton is going to tuck it away and keep it himself inside the 40. And let's see what the referees will spot it here. They need to get to the 35 for the first down. Joe May is credited with the tackle. As the clock continues to run now inside of four minutes. Cash is Vaughn, the corner for... Denver at the end of that play was in a bad spot because I think he took it as though Andy Dalton was sliding That's what he was saying to the referee as soon as the play was over So he didn't go down and hit Andy Dalton and they gave Andy Dalton about two more yards after the, the Attempted slide on that so that worked out pretty well for Andy Dalton So they're just outside the range of Mike Nugent Marvin Lewis is gonna roll the dice here on fourth and one But they'll first have to burn their second timeout They got about two extra yards on that play, I believe. By, by uh, Cassius Vaughn not making the hit on Andy Dalton. Let's look at it. You'll see he's going down the slide and Cassius Vaughn pulls up. But they give him forward progress on that play. So and it, instead of being fourth and three, it's fourth and one. Much more desirable situation for Cincinnati. What does Jake Rudin do here? Fourth and one. 322 left on the clock in a two-point Denver lead. It depends on how much confidence he's got in Andy Dalton, how cool Jay Gruden himself is under pressure here now. Everybody thinks they're going to probably try and run the football in this situation. It is a long one yard, but do you have the guts to have the, your young quarterback have a hard play action, make a hard play action fake, and try and make a, a play up the field maybe to your tight end, Jermaine Gresham, who's been pretty quiet today. It's all a matter of how much confidence and how how cool Jay Gruden is in this situation. Marvin Lewis, I'm sure, is making his opinion felt too as to what to do here. There was there was an attempt to challenge on the play before the timeout was attempted to be called. There is no challenge permissible on that play because the runner was down short of the line of game. Chicago could therefore not challenge the ruling on that play. So nothing will change the play not challengeable yeah so it will remain fourth and one they spotted at the Broncos 36 with 322 left in Cincinnati down two Andy Dalton the rookie quarterback out of TCU and the biggest play of his young NFL career Bays had 285 yards passing, but they need one yard to keep their hopes alive. A long one yard, too, Spiro. These are very knowledgeable football fans here in Denver. They're going to make this difficult on Cincinnati to get up on the snap. Green in motion. They go play action. It's incomplete as Dalton had to get rid of it. Robert Ayers applying the pressure in Denver will take the football back. Great discipline by Robert Ayers coming off the left side of the Denver defense. You see he does not bite on the fake. He knew bootleg was the only thing that could hurt him on the back side. A lot of times you're, you're hoping as an offensive coordinator, Jake Gruden, hoping that Robert Ayers chases after the running back and that that quarterback, Andy Dalton, can get outside. But very, very good discipline by Robert Ayer. That's a huge play for the Denver Broncos. So Cincinnati down to just one timeout left. They will have the two-minute warning to play with as well. Hardy Company will try to run that clock down. Here's McKayhee out past the 40 and brought down at the 44. There's a late marker behind the play. Tackle made Holding by Leon Hall. Offense number 78. 10-yard mm. penalty. Repeat first down. I'll give John Fox some more gray hairs. 
Well, that carry right there would have put Willis McGahee over 100 yards. Instead, they lose 10 yards on the play. Willis McGahee right now, 25 carries, 92 yards, and what could be considered kind of a breakout performance by him. So the penalty now makes it first and 20 from the Denver 26. McGahee picks up a yard and maybe two before he's tackled by Michael Johnson. And Cincinnati will burn its final timeout at the 251 mark of this fourth quarter. Timeout Cincinnati. That's their second. It's a 30 second timeout. Spiro, that's a, it's our mistake. It's their second timeout to the Bengals with one more at their disposal. That's a that's a big penalty that the, the Broncos just had right there because in this situation, you want to keep the clock running. That would have been a first down carry by Willis McGahee. Instead, now you're looking at second and 18 here. Three timeouts left for Denver, one for Cincinnati. But the odds in this situation of, of Mike McCoy and John Fox letting Kyle Orton throw the ball up the field are pretty slim. You got to get creative with a nice safe pass here, maybe a screen pass, some along that land line to make some yards. Two teams that were just 4-12 and 12 a year ago, desperately looking for an early season win as McGahee is wrapped up. Got maybe to the 33-yard line, and now the Bengals will take that final timeout. 30 seconds. So there's one more stoppage that Cincinnati has now at the two-minute warning. Denver, if they do not make the first down here with 2.46 left in the quarter, they're going to have to punt before the two-minute warning, which is why Marvin Lewis was so quick to get that timeout called. A reminder tonight on CBS, it all begins with 60 minutes, followed by back-to-back -back episodes of The Good Wife, followed by CSI Miami. It's all tonight, only on CBS. Sparrow Dita, Steve Barline, our entire CBS crew from Denver. The Broncos clinging to the two-point lead, but they must move the chains right here. McGahee going nowhere. And out of bounds. That is a big mistake by the veteran, the nine-year veteran, Willis McGahee. He should know in that situation what his coach is calling a run for is he wants that clock to run. If he starts getting close to that sideline, he's got to sit down with that football. You can't let him knock you out of bounds and stop the clock. Well, that turns out to be a disastrous possession for Denver, the holding penalty. Exactly right. And McGahee unable to stay in bounds before Atkins and Maluga brought him to the turf. Brandon Tate from his own 10. Inches towards the 30 as Andy Dalton and the Bengals take over down two with 225 remaining. The, those are the little things though, Spiro, that, that make a big difference. The punt, holding by the receiving team number 35. That penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Not that there's ever a good time for a penalty, but the timing for these mistakes here late in the ball game, this is what drives coaches crazy. You've got to be poised. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to make good decisions at key points in the ball game, or you're going to pay the price. Look at the difference. That ball was out of the 30-yard line, Spiro. That's another hidden yardage play. It's going all the way back to the 10-yard or the 5-yard line. Cincinnati Bengals looking for their first win in Denver since 1975. They'll spot it at the Cincinnati five-yard line. Can you believe that, 1975? Last time Cincinnati won here in Denver. Dalton from the end zone finds Gresham and was brought down at the nine. Wesley Woodyard on the tackle as we approach the two-minute warning. You said 1975. That was before you were born, isn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Just two wins ever here in Denver. 
Dalton swings to Green near side. He's got the first down up to the 17-yard line. And with that, we get to the two-minute warning. Two warning. The Cincinnati Bengals looking for one final push down two in a mile high city. Here in Denver, Cincinnati trailing the Broncos by two with a buck 58 remaining. And the Bengals out of timeouts. Mike Nugent's career long 54 yards, which means that the Bengals would have to get to the Denver 36. Dalton, play action. It's caught at the 40. A.J. Green once again with the catch. 22 yards and a Cincinnati first down. Oh, just a great call, great execution by Andy Dalton, A.J. Green. I think we're seeing the, the blooming of a great relationship here in Cincinnati. Dalton near side incomplete intended for Caldwell. There's Nugent again, his career mark 54 yards. Now you're going to be able to add a little bit more here in Denver, obviously, so you could probably extend that another three or four yards comfortably when you're talking about his range. Bengals need about another 24 yards to get to Nugent's range. Dalton, middle of the field, finds Caldwell. About two yards shy of the marker after a pickup of eight yards. Woodyard with the tackle. Dalton scurries his troops to the line of scrimmage. This will be third and two as we approach the final minute. Dalton across his body finds the rookie Green in a Cincinnati first down. And Green out of bounds with 63 seconds left. Tell you, what, what, this guy, A.J. Green, now he, he's a rookie, but he sure doesn't act like one. When Andy Dalton broke the pocket, he did a hokey-doke move. You saw Goodman right there, but he, he pretended as though he was going to go deep on Goodman. Goodman turned and started running, and A.J. Green just turned around, gave Andy Dalton a nice big body shot to throw that ball to him. It's a huge conversion on third down. Against Cincinnati, out of timeouts. Down two with a minute three remaining. Dalton, deep down the side, it's incomplete. Overthrowing Jerome Simpson, and it'll be second and ten. Boy, Jerome Simpson had gotten behind Cassius Vaughn right there. That's one Andy Dalton would love to have back. You can see Cassius Vaughn just stuttered his steps there just a little bit, and Simpson got behind him. That's considered open in the NFL, Spiro. You got to put it on him. There's Mike Nugent, seventh year veteran out of Ohio State. His career long 54 yards. This is second and 10 for the Bengals. Dalton. Under pressure, he's set. The Bengals have no timeouts. They have to hurry here. 50 seconds. Jonathan Wilhite on the blitz. Able to dump Dalton for the set. Perfect timing for the pressure from Dennis Allen and John Fox. But what a great call. Andy Dalton can't take that set. Dalton incomplete. Jermaine Gresham, the intended target. Woodyard got a hand on it. Well, Wesley Woodyard right there. A little bit. Jermaine Gresham saying he's hanging on me. He was. Wesley Woodyard with a great play, but he definitely had his hand on the back of Jermaine Gresham in order to kind of launch himself and propel himself in front of that football. He got away with one there. Cincinnati on fourth down. They need 19 yards to keep their hopes alive. They're out of timeouts. Dalton barely gets the playoff. Fires down the side. Incomplete. No, Dalton and Green had hooked up 10 times today. But they can't connect there. And the Broncos are 23 seconds away 
from a huge early season win. Andy Dalton disgusted, upset. Had a chance to win the ball game going into that drive. Cedric Vincent, the same thoughts. John Fox not upset, though, getting his first win today as a head coach of the Denver Broncos. Well, John Fox and company had to sweat this one out. They but needed the Denver it. Broncos will escape with a two-point win. Denver goes to one and one, while Cincinnati now stands at one and one as well. So your final score in Denver, the Broncos 24 and the Cincinnati Bengals 22. Coming up next at 60 minutes, followed by back-to-back -back episodes of The Good Wife and CSI Miami. Now for Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew, this is Spiro Dita saying so long from Denver. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.